Welcome to lesson four under hypothesis testing. In this lesson, we will examine the procedure for writing a two-tailed alternate hypothesis. This is a case where mu is not equal to a given value. This is brought to you by Dr. Dog from Texas A&M University Commerce. The alternate hypothesis is the antithesis of the null hypothesis. Whatever H0 is, HA is the other side of the argument. Now, we're going to consider one of three possibilities. In this particular case, we're going to look at the first of three possibilities, and the null hypothesis might be a claim, for instance, that mu equals 7. The alternate hypothesis is the claim that mu is not 7. Now, I hope you will notice that these two are mutually exclusive. Mu is either 7 or Mu is not 7. Mu can't be 7 and not be 7 at the same time. So, look at this curve which you have to the right when we're going to examine the claim that Mu is 7. Now, in our statistical mindset, when we make a claim that Mu is 7, we have a confidence level. Uh, that may be 80%, 90%, 95, uh, 98, 99, 99.9%, .9 whatever. I've just established here some sort of confidence level between uh, mu minus two standard deviations and mu plus two standard deviations. Let's assume that this is a 95% confidence level uh, with mu being 1.96 standard deviations below the mean and mu plus 1.96 standard deviations above the mean. Now in our statistical mindset, when we say mu is seven, we're going to be 95% certain that mu is seven if mu falls in this range. Now, let's move on. What we now have in this confidence level between these, this lower bounds and this upper bounds is the null hypothesis that mu is 7. We also have illustrated an error level. Inside this, if we're 95% certain that mu is 7 and it lies in this barrier, then we have 5% error and that error is equally divided on each end. The claim that mu is 7, where we have error, we have where mu is not 7. Mu could be down on the left side of this curve, or mu could be up on the right side of this curve. Our error of 5% is actually divided in 2 because of our construction. We have a confidence level mu is 7, and we have 2.5% of our error to the left, and we have 2.5% of our error to the right. Inside the confidence level, we have our null hypothesis. That's where mu is 7. Outside of our confidence level, we have our alternate hypothesis. If you will look at the arrow that we have on each end to the left of mu is 7, we have alpha over 2, or 2.5% two error. And to the right of mu is 7, we have alpha over 2, or in our case, 2.5% error. As we have previously discussed, the alternate hypothesis is the antithesis of the null hypothesis. H0, mu equals 7, is the claim. HA, the alternate hypothesis, mu does not equal 7, is the alternate to the null hypothesis. Now, if you will observe with these two, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis are mutually exclusive. They both cannot be true at the same time. Only one can be true. Now, to establish the claim mu equals 7, we and we looked at it with the first case alternate hypothesis where mu does not equal to 7. When we had a mu not equal to 7, we had to do a two-tailed test. And what that means is, is that our error is divided in half on each end. Okay, so you see our claim mu equals 7, our alternate mu does not equal 7, requires us to establish boundaries at alpha over 2. Claim is mu is 7, and our, our, our error is alpha over 2, which is on each end. Now, where these lines go down, we will have some sort of z-score that lets us trap the claim of 7 in the middle based upon our standard deviations and numbers and all sorts of other materials. We will be able to establish a boundary level that traps alpha over 2 error on each end.
I hope you've enjoyed this and continue working with your next lessons.